So I want to show you a fun little build that I've been trying over the last couple days ever since patch 10.7 got released. With 10.7 of course, the battleship commander skills have been changed just a little bit and of course the big one for most people is that secondaries are a little bit better now. So what I want to test though is not just the secondaries, which we'll play today, some Massachusetts, Georgia, Ohio, but I want to show you a skill that I think is kind of really, really good. I talked about it in my Palmer video a little bit as well as the video on the Republic, but improved repair party. This skill essentially works similar to AR. The more of something you have, then you actually get a reduced reload, you know, based on how much of that thing you have. So with Adrenaline Rush, of course, the more HP you lose, the faster your guns reload. It's very simple. Your armaments reload, I should say. It affects basically everything. Improved Repair Party is a little different. The more potential damage you have, the faster your heal reloads. So it does scale depending on <laughs> your ship's HP, right? So it does work a little better for the those lower HP battleships. Um, of course, a great example of that is Odin. And eventually I will put up a video about Odin. But today I really wanted to show a cool side effect or consequence of this skill being added. So in combination with Emergency Repair Specialist, which just gives us that flat 3% on our heal, as well as our damage control, we are going to have the opportunity of healing more often than we aren't. <laughs> so what do I mean by that? Our consumable action time with this build, it's a bit of an obscure build, I would say, gives us a essentially 34 second action time on our heal. And our reload time is not far off, right? We're around that 37 second mark. So if we can knock three to four seconds off of our reload time on our heal, then that means we're going to have our heal available more than it is on cooldown. <laughs> and that could be worth it if you're trying to brawl a lot. Of course, healing is super strong on battleships. That's something they're definitely known for, especially things like the Conqueror, for example. But all battleships are very, very good at taking damage and then healing it back. Of course, the weakness is that there's a cooldown period, so you can't just infinitely heal, right? So getting that cooldown as low as we can possibly get it is gonna be the theme of today's video. So let's see how much potential damage we need on these ships to actually make it about even, where our heal reload is equal to the action time of the heal. So here we are in our first little training room. I've loaded up a couple Minotaur bots to shoot at me. And we're just going to see how long it takes. Well, rather, keep an eye on that potential damage meter. We're down to 36 seconds on the reload. 35. All right. So we're at half a million potential damage. And it's around 34 now. And right there. So around 700,000 potential damage is all it takes for Massachusetts to have a faster reload on the heal than the action time of that consumable. How hilarious is that? As an added bonus to this build, the heal is a bit improved, right? We're healing for 13,450. That's more than you definitely would have had prior to this or running a different build. I think the normal heal on a Massachusetts is in that 11,000 HP mark. So you are getting more. At this point, we're nearing 2 million potential damage. That is a very strong game. And that reloads below 30 seconds at that point. Pretty incredible stuff here. <laughs> um, I think thinking you're going to live longer than 2.5 million potential damage, 3 million potential damage, especially at tier 8 uh, with these lower HP pools, isn't really going to happen. But as you can see, at near 3 million potential damage, we're at 26 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> of course, Minotaurs are going to kill me before I can actually get to my next heal. But that just shows you how this scales. And yes, I do believe that Adrenaline Rush is better. But the main issue with Adrenaline Rush is that it impacts your offensive power. Where a lot of the times when I'm playing my battleships, I complain about my inability to tank for extended periods of time. So as a... Brawling battleship player, 
I'm looking to increase my survivability, not my offensive power. I think the secondaries are enough points to put, as far as commander skills, into that offensive power. So, 750,000? Alright, so around 800,000 is the potential damage required to cross that threshold of being healing more than you are actually waiting for that heal to reload. Pretty awesome stuff. We'll use it here, try and stay alive as long as we can. One and a half million potential damage down, around 31 seconds on the Georgia. If you didn't know, that's what we did switch to. And it will take longer as you your HP scales up, right? It is based on multiples of your HP. So as you get more and more HP on your ship, the longer it takes for this to actually come into effect. But hopefully you're living longer and able to take more potential damage because your ship has more HP. You have more ability to heal, right? You can see our heal on our Georgia's 15,000 HP instead of that 13,000 on the Massachusetts. And there you go. 2.7, we're nearly 3 million potential damage. 26, 27 second reload on that heal. So I think that this might be a way to stay alive in a brawl for a longer period of time. I think this could possibly work to allow you to push in a little bit more. This is a tank skill that Wargaming has implemented, and I hope it's going to allow me to push in a lot more than I have been able to in the past. And last but not least, we have the Ohio. This one, we do have the most HP, right? And you can see how beefy that heal is at 19,000. But, well, of course, this skill scales with your health pool, so it will take us longer, right? Remember, with the Massachusetts, um, I'm going to throw up the numbers on screen. I don't actually remember. I think it was around 700,000 on the Massachusetts was the threshold. Georgia was around 800,000. And for the Ohio, I'm expecting it to be a little bit more, right? So we're approaching it now at 900,000 million potential damage. Yeah, about around a million is where you're getting the benefit. Okay. So in that sense, it does get worse as you have more HP, but you get that extra bonus of your ship, hopefully, being able to survive a lot longer. Ohio, of course, is well known for being a very tanky ship. You get that Montana hull. Georgia, I think, is probably going to be the worst of these ones as far as the price of having more HP goes versus the tankiness you get back, mainly down to the Georgia having a gigantic superstructure, right? It is even bigger than Ohio's and it's a tier lower. So that is the downside of Georgia, but you're so fast that maybe that makes up for it. You're able to get that potential damage a little bit easier. Crossing two and a half million potential damage and we cross the 30 second <laughs> mark on the reload of the consumable. So pretty incredible how this, this might keep you alive. Of course, three million potential damage, we get to that 28 seconds. So it does get worse as you go up in the tiers. Right, uh, if we were on a Massachusetts with this amount of potential damage, I think we'd be around that 25 second mark or even lower. So it does get worse as you get more HP, but I do not think a Massachusetts will get that much potential damage as easy. So building on the statements and arguments I kind of put forward on the Palmer video and the build for that commander, I want to talk about this steering gears mod here. No concealment and steering gears. This means that I'm going to be spotted from a very long distance away, and that means people are going to be shooting at me. So if I'm trying to farm potential damage, I kind of want people shooting at me from longer distances. If I run steering gears mod, I should be able to dodge that a little bit easier, and that will increase my, uh, or decrease the reload time on my heal even faster. So that is also adding into some of those arguments and I don't know about arguments, but thoughts I had on the Pomerantz build. I have been running this, of course, on all of my secondary battleships, this kind of build, and I think it is probably best on those German battleships and on the American secondary battleships. The other ones, well, the secondaries still take a really long time to get accurate, and the only reason it feels pretty good on these two, the premium American ones and the Germans, is because they get that baked in accuracy bonus just into the ship. So the accuracy gets reasonably good, you know, around that 20 to 30 second mark instead of having to wait for that full 45 seconds. And I think that's why I'll probably not run secondary builds on any other ships other than the Germans and these premium American secondary ones. 
at least if I'm trying to run more optimal fun builds, I'll still try them out, but I think they're really only viable for the most part on these ones. Anyways, let's hop into some games. I will show you some highlights, starting with the Massachusetts. Our Petro pushed into the middle by himself. This game is getting out of hand quick, guys. Oh my goodness. I don't really know what I'm supposed to do other than... I guess we'll try to go into the A cap. I'm going to pop my heal a little early here because I think I'm going to take some pain trying to get in. That is my guess. But I need to support this Z44. That is crucial. It's Bismarck. Yeah, I did not time this correctly at all. He's going to get a nice hit on my broadside. Oh, we get lucky. We get very lucky. Maybe we can get a dev strike here. Oh, not quite, not quite. We needed a dev strike. That's too bad. But we are getting closer to our next heal already. How funny is that? Try and get angled to everyone, hopefully. And again, we're running fire prevention, so we shouldn't be too bad off as far as fire damage is concerned. This guy is getting greedy for torpedoes. Unfortunately, I'm a battleship, and you're not guaranteed a kill there, but we get one. I'm going to do a greedy damage control there, and I'm actually going to swap to HE, because the HE might help us kill this Benham, although I don't know that for sure. It's, uh, it's a difficult game here. I don't know if we can pull this one out, but... You saw how quickly we got to our next heal there. It's very, very, very fast. And I think I need to slow down and turn in here. Because the Benham likely just has... He always has torps up. You just have to imagine this dude always has torpedoes available. So, yep. There they are. And... It's only one set, though. We might get nuked by the Alsace here. Yep. Yep. He got a citadel, that's really unfortunate for us. But that's two sets, so he has to turn around now. This Venom has to turn around actually to do anything to us. And here he comes, so good thing we have HE available. I think he's just gonna kill us here, I don't think there's much I can do. But we will try the good old turn in slow down. And secondaries, oh, maybe we go forward. We got a heal available, ah, oh, too bad. But we do get the Benham, and that's 95,000 damage. Ah, oh, rough team though, hey guys? Rough team. Blowouts. Blowouts, am I right? <laughs> oh. Well, not a bad result. Let's just take a quick look at the damage we got. Oh, that's... Yeah, that's not what you want to see out of teammates, I gotta say. <laughs> that is not a good look. <laughs> uh, our secondaries didn't do a ton of damage, but we did kill that Benham there. Unfortunately, secondaries are a little drunk when it comes to aiming at destroyers, so... Uh, they never have been really that amazing against DDs. It's just because of that auto-aim for the secondaries. The aim point seems to be just way behind the DD. I'm sure you've all noticed this. Secondaries on a DD, and all your shells land behind them. It's, uh, wargaming coding, I guess. <laughs> That's all it comes down to. <laughs> ah, yes. In classic tier 9 fashion, it has the best matchmaker out of any tier. <laughs> so we get an all tier 9 game. That's nice. After getting the full up tier on our Massachusetts, that's always the issue with playing tier 8. There's just so many people playing tier 10 that you're probably going to get into an up tier. But with the Georgia... Sometimes, actually a lot of the time, you get these tier 9 games, which are really, really nice. 500,000 potential damage. We're getting close to being able to heal more. Heal more than <laughs> it's on cooldown, which is insane. This guy should die here, I hope. Pop a spotter. And are you dead? You are not dead. Somehow that Neptune survives. Maybe I just suck. What do you guys think? Do I just suck? I might. 
use the rest of my speed boost to accelerate away. Snaptoon's definitely torping right now. You know what? My secondaries will finish him. Let's get that going on the Freddy. That's who we need to kill next. Prioritizing that target. And he did greedy single launches. Alright. We're already at our next heal. Look at how fast that was. Look at how fast we get to our heals. That's awesome. And they're pretty beefy too, considering how buffed we have them. So 100k already? <laughs> this is pretty good. Million potential damage? What's the reload? Alright, we're there. We're healing more than we are not healing. <laughs> That's so funny to say. That's so funny to say. I will spend more time this match healing than I won't from now on. <laughs> Assuming I actually have uh, room to use it, right? That is, of course, the caveat that I have to add. Because you need to be taking damage, too. Uh, I think my... Secondaries will probably help finish off that Freddy. So let's use main guns on the broadside Iowa again. How many broadside Iowas are we going to find today? He did 6,000 to our bow. We did 11,000 to his side only. It's not the damage you want to see, I gotta say. That's really sad. Uh, is this guy gonna ram me? He probably will actually, won't he? I think I can afford one. No, he's trying to do the drive by. I respect it. I respect drive bys. I really do, but uh, I think we'll be all right here. So we just do this and hit it. Drive bys are hard to do because your um, guns look in such funny areas. They look really odd some of the time. So get that back turn around, and there we go. Very good. Respect, my man. Thank you for not just going for the lame ram. I appreciate it. I really do. That deserves a worthy adversary. You don't see that every day. Most people just ram. <laughs> they get themselves into a close quarters engagement and they just ram. That is all they do. So, I love to see that. That is fun. Oh, that sucks. That is such unfor- That is so unlucky. Oh, that's so unlucky he got that torpedo in on me, man. Oh, well. Nothing you can do about that. As a pushing battleship, you just have to accept you're going to eat torpedoes. That is why I take Vigilance. But if you're pushing in this game, you're eating damage. And that is the whole thought process behind mitigating damage and being able to heal back more, get to your heals faster. That is the thought process for me. Because as a battleship player, you either have to camp, you're forced to in this game, or you push in and you accept that you're going to die. <laughs> like this Sean Bart did, too. <laughs> Actually, still a pretty good result. 191 secondary hits. That is pretty solid stuff out of a Georgia, you know? We don't have the extra fast reload like the Ohio gets on its secondary, so that's really cool to see. 2 million potential damage that game and 30k from our secondaries. Not bad. All right, we've had two losses now. Let's see if we can win one in this video, huh? <laughs> And we've got ourselves a tier 10 game with only two battleships. And at least it's only tier 8 carriers. We can somewhat deal with those. But oh boy, shows you how uh, how good battleships are right now. Oh man, they buff secondaries and give you the ability to try out all these captain builds and mix upgrade modules by demounting them for free and still nobody's playing them. <laughs> That's pretty funny. <laughs> but uh, I guess eventually if few enough people play battleships, maybe they'll get a buff. I would be interesting to see how they would do that. Personally, I'd prefer to just be able to not overpen a citadel. I think that would be the only buff I would possibly give a battleship, you know? When I hit someone's citadel and pen, you know, at least give me the damage for it, please. It's so rare anyway. <laughs> We're turning in for this Missouri shot. I really would love to see a Citadel here. It's a flat, broad Missouri, man. It's it should be Citadel City here. Nice. Okay, we got one. You have to be a little careful of the Druid. 
he if he gets our side could do some pretty big damage to us so that is one thing we got to work out look out for but i think we're pretty good to just get to this island with this petro this guy's a what slow down and turn out kind of gamer never want to do the same move all the time slow down and turn out is is the most common aha See, you predict someone, and then you get that dispersion. <laughs> oh, man. That is the other thing you have to accept when you play a battleship. You just have to say, going into it, you're going to aim well, and it won't matter. That's okay. We're at 35 seconds so far. I think that, w yeah, that booster's getting forced out, and we should be on this druid soon. That'd be pretty cool. Start with our first heal, get our secondaries going. And do we finish the yawn? Oh, we do. Oh, I was just a beast, guys. It really is. Alrighty, let's see how the secondaries do. You can see they're not particularly accurate yet, but we're getting there slowly. Oh, he goes dark though, so, so sad. I think this was a blowout from the other side, I guess, <laughs> so. World of Warships! I guess you just get blowout after blowout, huh? Maybe we can do some big hits to the Grav Zeppelin. I'd love to see something like that. Yeah, I wish they'd do a little more to get some closer matches, man. I really do. It'd be nice. It'd be really nice. Oh, yeah, there's the big hit. Not the best set of games, I would have to say. I think our Georgia one was probably the most interesting. But, uh, yeah, not bad. This Wooster is more focused on farming me than he is dealing with the Alaska bearing in on him. That is... That is interesting, I gotta say. That's an odd play, but fair enough, I guess. Ah, uh, he just left. Pretty sure we overmatch. Yeah, we're at 800,000 and we're nearly there, right? We're a second away. Too bad. Did not get an opportunity on this uh, on this day for one of those intense close games. I guess uh, we'll have to keep playing and maybe I'll show you a really good game if I uh, end up streaming and having a really good one on the Ohio that really shows it, you know? Nice. Main guns, guys. Main guns. As good as secondaries have kind of become, main guns. Main guns, main guns, main guns. I think that's the play. Anyways. Certainly not the best game from us, but it was another blowout, so what are you going to do? And uh, maybe I'll have to amend what I said about 30% of the games being guaranteed wins and 30% being guaranteed losses. It might be. Uh... So, is this what you'd call fan mail? Is that is that what this is? I don't think he knows, man. I don't think he knows. You know, the best way to get better at the game is to not call someone who's better than you a cheater, but to think, what did they do? What do they do that I'm not doing? That is a learning mentality. That's how you get better at the game. But, uh... Yeah, I mean, it is just a video game after all, so why are you so upset? It is a video game. So in conclusion, there it is. There is the only battleships in the game, only ships in the game, where you can be healing more often than you aren't. Pretty cool. Not the best examples, but what are you gonna get what are you gonna do when you go out and play a couple games in an afternoon? You're never gonna get perfect options. But we did a a decent job and we had some fun along the way so thank you guys for watching this video I hope you enjoyed it and uh, yeah I'll see you next time